Hi everyone, thanks for joining this session. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, smart control plane for CI/CD pipelines. So, I am Shripad, uh, Shripad Nargoda. I am software architect. Uh, I am currently leading multiple initiatives uh, around software supply chain security, primarily around how we operationalize SBOM and how do we secure our CI/CD pipeline. There are a few talks I gave at KubeCon earlier, the, so you can even look into those. And uh, I'm joined here with Ashish. Hi, thanks, Shripad. My name is Ashish Patwara. I'm technical evangelist, experienced in the leading multiple teams, and then working around cloud, software, st storage, networking, analytics. S played several roles, uh, product management, developer, manager, etc. So, um, well, let's get going. Uh, so I'm going to cover the background about what we are doing, and then Shripad is going to talk about the actual demo and you will see you know, how uh, this smart control plane works. So, um, so let's talk about CICDs. Um, of course, I'm not going to cover CICD. CICD is not a new topic, right? There are many tools available in the market like Jenkins or Tecton that can be used to set up a pipeline, right? Um, and that can automatically trigger the build, the testing, the analysis of the code, or even deployment on the target platform. So our approach basically extends these tools by providing a smart control. That means allowing multiple pipelines and multiple users to be managed by a single control plane. That means you can have complete visibility into different projects depending on your roles and the requirement. By smart, I mean that basically you know, uh, automated recommendation considering the projects, considering the user roles, considering you know, several artifacts related to the project, okay? So before I get going in detail, let's talk about who are our partners in this. So there are several user personas or actors, right, for a CI-CD pipeline. I'm going to cover just four of them, but like, you know, developers, or the QA, man, QA engineers, man, release managers, your test, your InfoSec, uh, security engineers, CISO, all these are the actors or the personas for the CI/CD pipeline. So today I'm going to talk about just four major personas. One is the developer. So basically, the the role of developer is just to you know build the code and fix the issues. That's pretty much the role of developer is. And here the Jane is the developer, just for just for the namesake. Um, Rohit Rohit is basically a DevOps engineer whose responsibility is to manage and maintain uh, the pipeline. Um, then comes down to um, our CISO, his uh, or her, uh, the chief information security officer, right? And uh, her responsibility is to make sure that um, that the required regulatory and compliance standards are met. So the developer basically looks at the initial or engages at the initial stage of the pipeline. Uh, the DevOps engineer and CISO they look at the you know later stages of the pipeline. And then fourth is important is the Matt, who is the InfoSec engineer. So basically, the, he's per, the InfoSec engineer is basically looking at the designing and implementation, and even the managing the different security controls, different security tools, right? Uh, to make sure that that developers uh, and the whole pipeline has the required uh, tools and controls. So after talking about uh, the different personas, right? Let's talk about um, uh, <clears throat> the, the different types of CI/CD pipelines that we may have. The one is like your shared pipeline where multiple users are basically you know, uh, using the same pipeline. Then there are pipeline where basically you can have the modular pipeline. The, in the modular pipeline, you can have customized control depending on the project. And then, then it, that's kind of a variation of a um, shared pipeline. And then you can have the mono repo pipeline, where basically you know you have single repository, but there are multiple projects get built out of the same pipeline. And but one thing is common in across these, like the, the the common goals, whatever the type of pipeline is, they share the common goal, like ensuring the efficiency, high quality, and error-free software delivery, ensure security and compliance, and optimize the resource utilization. So no matter what, you will have these common goals. Now, these actors or the personas have to talk to each other, and coordinating and communicating with each other is a complex task. 
and on top of it, um, you will have uh, you know different pipeline, shared pipeline, right? That also creates a complexity, and then. And then on top of it, you know, uh, these coordinated uh, or, or the tracking these coordinated communication is a challenge. So what um, what we are trying to solve is coming up with an approach that can help addressing these things. And so far, I just talked about the personas, but now talk about the systems involved in this. So this is the kind of a GitHub repository where developers need to access, put their source code, put the fixes, right? Then coming to the the DevOps engineer, they also need to. Uh, put their configurations, uh, pipeline related configuration, and the tools related information in the source code. And then the security tools marketplace, where you need to make sure that you have the right security tools for different pro different project types. So that's a, and that basically information comes, uh, you know, into the, into the, into your source code, because that new, that allow you to build the, and then the actual pipeline itself. And then at the end of the pipeline, you get to see all the compliance reports and different different other type of artifacts and reports that basically our compliance officer uh, take a look at it and suggest what's happening. Um, so 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 you can think of you know one side is a personas, the other side these are the different systems, and now they have to talk to each other, right? That's a that's a challenge that we are trying to solve here. Okay, so merging these actors and tools, right, is a complex and error prone task. It's not easy, right? And on top of that, there are multiple pipelines with multiple components and multiple user roles, right? That creates a much more, a much more challenging uh, for us to manage. So this is what we are trying to show here, right? So managing and multiple uh, pipelines is very complex and error prone. Now, so we talked about the tools was, uh, or the systems. We talked about the personas, right? Now, if I look at from the CISO point of view, right? What are all the uh, what I need from the CISO point of view? I need the insights. I need insights into what type of applications is my organization running, like whether it's a microservices, non-microservices, or Go-based or the Python-based, right? All these things, information I need to have as a CISO, as a CISO right? And also, what kind of security controls? does my all application that my organization is running, I need to have for that, right? And on the other side, you know, control, like, how do I basically, you know, make sure that all these things are running in compliance? And, and, and how I make sure that, you know, with the, all the requirement changes or the new projects coming in, how do I make sure that uh, I have the, you know, all the, I, I take care of all the requirement changes, right? As requirement changes, I have deployed those tools, make sure that everything is in compliance. Now, talking about the DevOps engineer. So DevOps engineer needs to make sure that, that it's an ease of maintenance and the automation. When I say ease of maintenance means, you know, how can I efficiently manage and multi manage, you know, multiple pipelines, right? How do I keep track of the requirement changes? Similarly, on the, how do I, how do I basically automate these common, uh, common tasks? And, and are these statically defined and managed pipelines really helping us? Because today you can have, you know, each project have their own pipeline, right? They pull in the tools, et cetera, et cetera, right? Are they really helping us? Um, the, the one is the developer, right? My, I want to insulate myself as a developer. I want to insulate myself from, you know, everything else, right? I just want to write code, fix mugs, and done with it, right? Nothing more, nothing less, right? How can I basically ensure a high velocity of code deployment? That's uh, as a developer I need to know, right? So now we'll talk about how we are solving that problem, and Shripad will will take take us through that journey. Yeah, thanks, Ashish. So this was really uh, interesting, right? Like uh, Ashish uh, illustrated. So one problem, as we mentioned, the statically defined pipeline. The pipelines are today we have so many pipelines, and why? Because they are conf they are driven by different parameters. I have a different pipeline when I create a pull request. I have a different pipeline when I commit the change. I have a different pipeline that goes to my production workload, different pipeline for staging. And this is essentially creating this management problem. So when we started looking into this uh, the solution space, we went to the whiteboard and we said, okay, what do we want? So we, we, we thought, okay, we want some magic wand, which actually can create us a single control plane where multiple actors can interact through a common uh, system, common platform. What I mean, right? So for instance, as a CISO, when I make a decision that I want to implement a new security control for my organizations from going forward, 
I make that decision and I communicate or uh, feed that decision to this uh, magic control plane. And now this magic control plane needs to be able to create an actionable plan. Like, okay, who are the actors who are affected by this uh, decision? Uh, for instance, I made a decision that I need to implement new security control. So who, what are the tools that are required for uh, that can implement this? So someone has to discover those. And then the DevOps engineer, they need to go and implement those in the pipeline. Uh, so that is essentially the kind of uh, uh, the interactions that we are looking for to automate here. And the second thing is, we, I mean, we already have a plethora of uh, this system that uh, we just discussed. Like we have, for just storing the source code, we have GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. Uh, for running our pipelines, we have Jenkins Tecton. We are not trying to create an, yet another system, right? This platform is built on top of it. We want all these existing components to be plugged into this system. So we can effectively basically manage these systems. So this was essentially something that we say, okay, this, on a high level, this is something that we want, a single control plane that can achieve this goal for us. And then we say, okay, what are the three major principles, right? So one is, yeah, we want this common platform where these multiple actors can share responsibility and then they can manage actions. When I make a decision, uh, I don't have to basically explicitly communicate to all the respected or affected parties. I just make that decision and I feed it to the system. It will communicate and manage that uh, the after effect of that decision. The second is automation with the dynamic decisions for pipeline executions, right? So uh, one thing that, as, as I mentioned, the one problem that is, is we have too many pipelines. What if, if we have zero pipeline? The pipeline gets created when they are needed, right? So uh, I, I need a pipeline, I, I look into the context, this, uh, what is the event that is uh, creating the pipeline, what is the context in which it is being invoked, and I automatically compose the pipeline. Right? And that pipeline get used for execution. So we don't have to store and manage and version control the pipelines. The pipeline has a code, maybe we can just get it off that. And then finally the pluggable interface, right? As I said, our objective is not to invent yet another system, but to allow a platform where these existing systems, existing technologies that we have, they can be easily plugged in. Okay. Uh, so this is essentially, few principles that we set forward for us. And then we say, okay, let's go ahead and build this system, how, how it can look like. So on a very high level, it has two components, right? Pipeline executions and pipeline management. So pipeline executions is anything that is uh, all the components that get uh, involved when you start executing a pipeline. When I create a pull request, the pipeline get executed. So all those things come under the pipeline execution. Pipeline management is the thing that is happening back in the background or out of band that affects or influences the pipeline executions. Like I make a policy, the CISO is making new decision or new tool, some tool is getting deprecated from use. So all those things come under pipeline management that is happening in the background and they influence the pipeline execution. So what are those components looks like? So again, SmartFlow is, is, is something that we call this platform, the magic wand that I showed you. So we, we have, it is based on some set of APIs that we are still uh, uh, expanding. One thing it has, it's, it has a SEC tool crawler, right? So what this tool does, it essentially crawls, there are a bunch of marketplace where these tools are available and they have, these tools are specific, right? When I want to do, let's say vulnerability scan, I have set of tools in the marketplace like Sneak uh, or others uh, which are the paid versions or some open source like Trivi, uh, that I can just use. So the SEC crawler tool goes ahead and it, it crawls the ar artifact hub, the, uh, the GitHub marketplace, and all the uh, marketplace where these tools are available, and it find out these tools are applicable for this kind of artifact in this context. These are applicable for container or monolithic applications or microservices, and it creates the catalog internally, right? Then we have policy managers. So, I mean, our objective was to automate various actions. And when we have actions, we need to have some way to uh, communicate our restrictions, right? So that is a policy manager. And the pipeline configs. So even if, when I say the pipelines are getting created dynamically, there are some uh, configurations, like if I'm using some proprietary tool for some security scan, I need to feed it some uh, secrets or what are the uh, API endpoints. Uh, that are common, which are not specific to execution, but basically the configuration of that, those particular tools. That, that needs to be feed. Uh, we have centralized uh, database where all these actions, all these events, 
all the uh, metadata is stored, and uh, of course the event stream, right? Whenever one component changes, we need to have the uh, uh, via smart flow, which essentially find out what is, oh, this is the action plan, and it, it communicates the events, like, okay, the developer needs to do this, uh, or uh, these are the things that we, we need to actuate for that particular persona. And this is all in the management plane, right? This is happening in the background or out of band. And then the execution, which shows a GitHub. Uh, as a user, I make some change. Uh, we, we build a trigger handler. So the, that action doesn't invoke uh, directly interact with your uh, target uh, CI system like Jenkins or uh, Tekton, right? We have our own trigger handler, which actually intercepts that request. Uh, it passes the event. It determines the context, like who is the user, who, what, what kind of event is it. Uh, based on all the management that we have done, what kind of pipeline does the user want, what kind of uh, desire uh, controls there are, we dynamically create a pipeline definition, right? And then we start executing that pipeline. So this essentially avoids a lot of uh, overhead uh, in the sense that uh, now as a even DevOps engineer, my responsibility is just to ensure that I'm providing a concrete pipeline configurations. I don't have to, if uh, let's say newer version of some uh, source tool or available or some tool is deprecated, I don't have to go and change all thousands of pipelines that, uh, that are used in my organizations, right? So we are trying to avoid that bottleneck and uh, to drive the efficiency out of it. So let me show you quickly uh, some demo that we have. So again, I'm right now showing it through command prompt. This is again a, a very active project. So we are building out some UI framework on top of it. So let's say I'm a developer and uh, I register some, uh, I say, okay, smart flow, register this particular repository for me, right? It tells us this is the, what kind of project is it and uh, what is the role? Is it a sandbox or is it going to in the production? Once this goes, the, uh, our uh, smart flow engine, it basically goes ahead, discovers the various artifacts for this repo. Is it a microservice repo? What kind of artifacts that are being used? And uh, it feeds it into our database. Now that's, as a developer, that's my role. And that's essentially what is covered here. Now, as a CISO, I go and I say, okay, I want to list the features, all the features that are defined here. Or I can first actually query the repository, right? So show me all the repositories that I use in my organization, right? It tells us, okay, these are the repositories, these are the artifact type, what kind of uh, applications are these? And again, in typical organization, just sh seeing this list is not going to be helpful because it's, it easily will run into thousands. Uh, like in our organization, it is like in tens of thousands uh, or close to 100,000 repositories. But then I can go and say, okay, what are the security uh, scans that I have, features that I have defined for my organization to implement, right? So that's my responsibility, that I need to have, if someone is using Go, then they need to have static scan, vulnerability scan, uh, what, what kind of artifact uh, is it applicable to, and what is the importance? Is it critical, it is important, or it is optional, right? So these are the, basically the security policies that I'm defining as a, as a CISO. And then uh, I can basically ask, okay, what are the, uh, are there any security policies that I'm missing? I mean, my, my developers are using some artifact. There are some security policies for that, but I'm not covering those kind of artifact. And now it says, okay, there is some, uh, some uh, developer is using this uh, data trident library, which, is, which has some artifact called Mustache, uh, which is related to the storage. It is used in production, but yeah, you don't have any security policies defined for this. Okay. Uh, and as a CISO, I can make, okay, this is fine. I think I can make a glass break and I can say, okay, this is approved. Uh, I don't have any uh, concerns for this. And we can go ahead and uh, basically go ahead with this. Uh, now, as the, uh, as the InfoSec engineer, now my CISO has defined some policy, my developer is using something. And now, uh, as, a, uh, as a InfoSec engineer, I need to know, are there any gaps in the tools? that are available in my organization. I say, okay, there is no, no gaps that are available. And now, suddenly, I have some developer in my organization who decide, okay, Rust is the new, uh, new shiny thing and I need to build my new application in Rust, right? 
So, he goes and uh, he registers a new application. Uh, again, this is an application which is built in Rust, it uses Next, and now CISO is unaware of this, right? CISO doesn't know that th there is new artifact or new security controls I need to define. So, CISO again goes and, uh, sorry. CISO goes and says, okay, uh, uh, again, periodically, our system will create an event. It says, okay, there is, seems to be some artifacts, some applications, like written in Rust, Marty, uh, uh, that, that are being used by your developers, which are being deployed in production, but you don't have any security controls defined for this, right? So now, as a CISO, I can say, okay, I need to basically add some security controls. So I, I say, okay, I'm going to add a security control that all the Rust a code should be statically scanned, and uh, it is it is critical. It has to be done, right? I add this now. The smart control essentially going to create the uh, uh, event for the DevOps. Sorry, for the infosec person. That is say, uh, okay. There is a CISO policy defined, but there is no tool that you have defined here. And now, the smartness that we are talking about, right, it comes from, we are not only telling about the gaps, like what is not present. We are actually telling what are the tools that are available, right? So, the, because we have that, uh, I told you that the SIG crawler, which actually crawls and find out what are the applicable tools, maintains the catalog, and now it, ought, it is tried to recommend the tools right, to the uh, InfoSec, right? Okay, Th there, is a, there is a gap, you don't have some tools for Rust. But, but there are some tools like Cargo Audit, this particular version, is it free, is it, what is the license for this? And now as a uh, InfoSec, I can say, okay, I think this is good, I can go ahead and approve this particular tool, and that would essentially go ahead and uh, trigger the workflow for pipeline creation, which uh, we are not showing, I think, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it briefly uh, in a minute. But this is essentially the crux, right? I showed you the, uh, the management workflow, the, the, that one I showed, like how we are managing this, uh, uh, the information that is flowing between different actors, how we are automating, what are the smartness that we are baking into the system. So let me go back uh, to the slides here. So what about, so there are a few things that uh, I think everyone is thinking, right? We have been hearing about one pipeline or pipeline templates and everything. So how, how is it different than that, right? So this one pipeline, pipeline templates, they basically are trying to standardize the pipeline inside the organizations, right? So instead of, I, I, if I have 100 developers, right, and they are building their own pipeline, then I end up with 100 different pipelines with different size and shape. Now with one pipeline or this template, I still have 100 developers, but they are all using 100 pipelines, uh, they are using one pipeline, but I still uh, have the 100 pipelines to manage. The only thing is their shape and size is same. If I want to change something, some configurations or some tool get, uh, I need to add, I still need to go and update all 100 pipelines, right? So that's the, uh, uh, the catch here that we, uh, it is not that we are uh, saying that everyone should use the same pipeline, but we are saying the pipeline will be created for you when you need it, right? You don't have to manage this. Another, as we saw earlier, you know, when I think Christy was also telling in the, uh, in the keynote today, we have a lot of auto generations, pipeline auto generations being baked in into chat GPT, BARD, we can just say, okay, build me the pipelines and it will start uh, generating the pipeline definitions for us. So, uh, but again, uh, as again, we discussed uh, in the keynote, right? So th these definitions, we cannot just take it as is it. Like even if you see in the description, it says this is a starting point. Right. So you need to take this and you need to validate this and then you need to understand and then put it into use. Right? We cannot just directly put it into use. And these are the things that we are uh, currently exploring for the, uh, the auto generation of the pipelines and uh, putting it into our frameworks uh, together. So uh, call for actions, again, this is an open source initi initiative. Uh, we want to basically uh, uh, looking for feedback, we want to, we are looking for some technical advisors and contributors. We are currently uh, running some pilots for integrations into existing solutions, like how do we integrate with Tekton, how do we integrate with uh, Jenkins, how do we integrate with uh, Marketplace, how do we make them pluggable, uh, and get some feedback from respective vendors and uh, get these things basically in, in actions. 
Uh, with that, I think, yeah, if you have any thoughts, any feedback, uh, please feel free to connect with us on GitHub or on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I think that's all uh, we have for today. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we started with uh, one implementation. I mean, this is something that we started before ChatGPT, right? We didn't knew that we'll have this tool that can generate the pipeline. What we started with is some templates for GitHub uh, workflows, GitHub actions. We basically created a template and we said, okay, we templatize everything, starting from name, tool, where we pull the secrets and everything. And then once we get an, uh, that event, we started basically populating that, those templates. Oh, I don't need this stage and everything. Because this is a deterministic uh, process, right? How do we build a pipeline? Configuration is, is automation, right? We, you just call two APIs, the pipeline gets configured. Uh, and that's how essentially we started. And then once this, uh, we started seeing some promise in, oh, we are getting some starting point. We don't need to go ahead and create this template and maintain this template because we don't want to go from managing pipeline to managing template, right? No, we don't want to just transition to that. And that's where essentially we are now exploring that we had one solution of this basically using with templates, uh, which was again good because we just have a bunch of templates, like uh, around 20 templates. Uh, for each different tools, and we can select based on that. So whenever we uh, identify new security controls, we, the DevOps uh, goes and creates that template, and then at runtime, we automatically select that template and populate it with the values. So I think that approach uh, works for us, and that actually uh, was good for the initial uh, pilot that we did. But I think right now we are, as I said, exploring with uh, some of these EGI features so that, okay, can we build it on top of those starting points that are, that are getting provided. Yeah, CD, I think uh, we, we had a few uh, thoughts uh, on uh, CD deployment also. I mean, the, 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 uh, the challenge there is the configurations are basically quite diverse there, right? So again, the approach is going to be the same. We need to abstract out the differences. If you can model them in some way, uh, because if, if I'm deploying on Kubernetes, that is completely different than if I'm deploying it on some server, right? It and depends we, on the target, basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The CD is different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so right now we have the auto generation. So we don't ask developer to, I mean, we, we developer as a developer, I just say, because one thing is if we put a lot of things on developer, then if they make a mistake, then again, we, we, we want to basically, that is basically becomes our baseline, right? Whatever developer define. Instead, if we have a lot of automation, we can, we can discover those. So in this one, I just showed you, when you register, uh, the smart flow goes ahead, discovers, is it a microservice, do you have a Docker file? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. No, yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so idea again, uh, we want to leverage as 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 much as possible, right? We don't want to reinvent the wheel, right? So, uh, build pack is essentially uh, I have used it properly, and that is essentially the motivation, right? That okay, we have this uh, discovery engine that build packs already was doing it when you gave it a repository, it determines how we can build it, right? And for us, we don't want to build it; we just want to get that extract that knowledge. Okay, what this artifact means, right? Uh, build packs was specifically for microservices, right? It says only. So we said, okay, we, we want to basically go beyond microservices also. Like we want to discover microservices as one artifact type. Like if I Docker file, if I'm building it, then but there might be some applications which might be beyond. So, but again, we want to build on top of the existing tools and technologies for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, that's all I think we are running out of time. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.